My name is Hua Yan Zhang. I am the director of the Newborn and Infant Chronic Lung Disease Program at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and an associate professor of clinical pediatrics at the University of Pennsylvania, Perelman School of Medicine. This presentation is a series of modules focused on bronchopulmonary dysplasia, also called the infant chronic lung disease. In the first module, we will discuss the epidemiology and definition of BPD. By the end of the first module, the learners will understand the history and recent epidemiology data of BPD, the various definitions used in the diagnosis of BPD, and limitations of these definitions. BPD is a disease that was created by modern medicine and also evolved with our specialty. The introduction of mechanical ventilation in the 1960s was one of the major new interventions in unitology, which provided life-saving support for infants with respiratory failure. This has led to improved neonatal survival, especially for preterm infants born less than 30 weeks gestation with immature lung function. Shortly after the onset of mechanical ventilation in the preterm infants, Northway and colleagues first described BPD in 1967. Over the following few decades, there has been many technology advancement, including major improvements in ventilators and ventilation strategies, the administration of antipartum corticosteroids, and replacement surfactant therapy. These advancements have led to a significant decline in mortality of low birth weight infants. For example, in 1991, the American Academy of Pediatrics reported a 24% decline in mortality nationwide in low birth weight infants. With advances in neonatal care, the clinical feature of BPD also changed, and the concept of the new BPD emerged in the late 1990s. However, for many years, the incidence of BPD continued to increase, and to date, BPD remained as the most common chronic lung disease of childhood. The following two slides contain graphs that illustrate the challenge we face in respiratory care. In this graph, you can see that neonatal mortality associated with respiratory distress syndrome has decreased dramatically since the 1970s. Advance in neonatal care have allowed for smaller and younger infants survive. However, as shown in the next graph, the incidence of BPD in infants born at 22 to 28 weeks gestational age climbed up to over 40% by late 2000s. Research from the NICHD Neonatal Research Network highlights how the incidence of BPD increases with decreases in gestational age. Similarly, this figure also from the NICHD Neonatal Research Network shows that the severity of BPD also increases with decreases in gestational age. While estimates vary depending on the applied definition and the data source utilized, upwards of a quarter of infants with birth weight less than 1,500 grams and one half of infants born less than 1,000 grams are diagnosed with BPD. In the U.S. alone, BPD affects between 10 and 15,000 infants annually, and it is associated with high mortality and morbidity. In the five decades since BPD was first described by Norsway et al., the criteria and definition used to diagnose BPD has undergone a number of modifications. A number of different criteria for BPD have appeared in the literature since then, beginning with definitions developed in the late 1970s to modifications made by Shannon et al. in the late 1980s. To address the concern over the wide variation in the reported BPD incidence, the NICHD consensus definition and the physiological definition of BPD emerged in the early 2000s. However, despite these efforts, marked difference in the use of various definitions of BPD still exists. A BPD definition such as the Shannon criteria that classifies infants at a single point of clinical course of BPD at 36 weeks 
ignores the chronicity of the respiratory course. The 2000 NICHD consensus definition, as shown in this table, attempt to address this issue by requiring a minimum of 28 days of supplemental oxygen to make the diagnosis of BPD, and also try to classify the severity of BPD by including oxygen con concentration at 36 weeks postmenstrual age. However, the proposed criteria were ambiguous in that the original specification regarding receiving oxygen for 28 days has since been misinterpreted as receiving oxygen at 28 days in many reports, and this subtle change can influence the rate of BPD dramatically. In addition, infants on high-flow nasal cannula cannot be classified based on this definition. Except for the added benefit of BPD severity classification, this definition is similar to the one proposed by Bancalari in the late 1970s. At the present time, this NIH consensus definition is one of the most widely used definition of BPD. One major commonality of all these definitions is that they all arbitrarily classify infants as having or not having BPD based on their oxygen needs at a predetermined time point. However, there are wide variations among centers in terms of the use of supplemental oxygen because there are no standard criteria for oxygen use. In addition, multiple factors, including immaturity of the infant's respiratory system and different treatment approaches, all influence oxygen use. The root problem here is that we try to use the clinical care variable, not pathophysiology, to define the disease. As a result, it is difficult for any of these definitions to capture the disease severity or be able to predict the long-term outcome accurately. Currently, there are ongoing efforts to come up with a better definition. This concludes Module 1. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, NEO Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.